So let us be marked not for sorrow, and let us be marked not for shame. Let us be marked not for false humility, for thinking we are less than we are, but for claiming what God can do within the dust, within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made, and the stars that blaze in our bones, and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear. Those words of Jan Richardson, the poet, with which we opened our service, those words get me every time. We are marked today. Whether we come to the church to receive ashes marked on our forehead, or whether we pray alone in our homes, Ash Wednesday marks us. It reminds us that we are dust. But to say that we are dust isn't the same as saying we are nothing. Do you not know what the Holy One can do with dust? Richardson asks us. Do you not know? We've had a hard year. We are having a hard year. Ash Wednesday of last year was one of our last in-person services. And even then, a, the word of the virus was starting to make an impact on our community. Since then, we have been reminded over and over and over again that we are dust, that we are fragile, that we are contingent beings relying on God's grace and on one another. Some of us didn't need the reminder of the last year. We've known because of our life experiences, because of who we are, that we are fragile, that we are contingent, that we rely utterly on God and on one another. The reminder that we are dust today comes in the middle of all of this, comes at, at almost the one-year anniversary of the onset of this pandemic. But again, the reminder that we are dust today is not a reminder that we are nothing. Instead, it is a reminder that we are made of the same stuff as the rest of the cosmos, born into God and dying into God. God was there when the dust of the earth was made. God was there when the dust of the earth was gathered up and God breathed life into it and made humanity in all our messy beauty. God will be there when each one of us returns to the dust from which we came, and God will be there when the dust of the earth ceases to be. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. And God will be with you through the whole journey. Now, Ash Wednesday does ask something of us. Lent asks something of us. It asks us to consider what it is we are doing with this one wild and precious life, as the, as the poet Mary Oliver would say. What are you doing with this life, with this time between the dust? And here in Lent is our chance to turn, which is another way of saying to repent. We have a chance to turn toward the good, toward the whole, toward the just, Toward the peaceful. We have a chance to turn toward the great, deep, and mysterious love of God. We enter the wilderness of Lent. We wander through the wilderness of Lent so that we can emerge on Easter Sunday fully embracing the resurrecting, life-giving power of the God whose love never fails. Lent is not a punishment. It is a blessing. Being dust is not a punishment, it is a blessing, if only we can see it. So in the words of a different poem by Jan Richardson, to receive this blessing, all you have to do is let your heart break, let it crack open, let it fall apart, so that you can see its secret chambers, the hidden spaces, where you have hesitated to go. Your entire life is here, inscribed whole upon your heart's walls, every path taken or left behind, every face you turned toward or turned away, every word spoken in love or in rage, every line of your life you would prefer to leave in the shadow, 
every story that shimmers with treasures known and those you have yet to find. It could take you days to wander these rooms, 40 at least. And so let this be a season for wandering, for trusting the breaking, for tracing the rupture that will return you to the one who waits, who watches, who works within the rending to make your heart whole.